It's a new dawn. It's a new day. Welcome to the Wildcast Podcast, coming to you from Wildcast Studios with your hosts, Adam Lund and Jeremy Boucher. Oh, welcome to Wildcast Studios for the QMJHL Draft Preview Part 2 episode of the Wildcast Podcast. Your unofficial voice for all things Moncton Wildcast, presented by Alpha's Appliance Solution, the premier destination for appliances and storage solutions in Moncton. Right now, they got the KitchenAid Suite Savings event. Save two hundred when you purchase any two qualifying KitchenAid freestanding appliances. Save three hundred when you purchase any three, and four hundred when you purchase any four qualifying purchases must be made in store. Now till May 29th. As always, fan listeners, I am your host Adam Lund, and I am joined by your favorite, no longer co-hoster. He is a been upgraded to host, That's right. according to Tosh Taylor. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Boucher, congratulations on the promo. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, finally named the host. You know, it's been a yeah. it's been a long road to uh, to get here, and you know, it's uh, six years. Yeah, uh, it's and uh, to uh, to be able to take over for you, I got bigger shoes to fill. <laughs> you do, but yeah. I can. Uh, I'm ready for. And on uh, day one of those shoes being filled, you went out and got. A massive guest that we're going to bring on here. Well, that is bit. true. I, I, it's you true. You stepped I, up. Uh, you know, I pulled some strings. I was working the phones all day to yes. uh, to, to line this particular guest up. Not a big and, deal. And uh, super thrilled to yeah. uh, be able to have uh, this individual uh, join us later in the show. Yeah, we got. Uh, it's one of our biggest episodes. We got four guests lined up. Three we knew about coming into today, and then. You got yourself a little promotion, courtesy of Tosh Taylor and Q94.5, and uh, you're making things happen. Big week for both of us. Big week for both of us. One of us spent a lot of money, and one of us spent a little bit of money. Uh, how was your week? Uh, it was, yeah, you're right, very expensive. <laughs> uh, as we kind of teased a couple of weeks ago, uh, we uh, were looking at a house, and uh had an offer accepted. The sellers accepted our offer. Uh, we got through all the paper, uh, paperwork side of things. All the financing and everything yeah. has gone through. And uh, no, so we're the fam and I uh, got ourselves a nice little house, and we're uh, moving in on the 29th of May. Oh, that's you know, it's just in time for the spring KitchenAid Sweet Savings. That's that right, and uh, the, it just so happens. Yeah. That uh, all the appliances are staying. Yeah. However, the dryer does need to be replaced. All right, we'll go see our friend Brad at uh, at Alpha's Appliance Solutions. Brad at Alpha's Appliances. Yeah. Uh, you, you better be looking forward to my <laughs> visit, and I'll be asking for the Wildcast Podcast discount. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no man. Congratulations Thanks on so that. Much, yeah. Stress is it's stressful time, eh? Yeah, it is. Doing, um, it year was, and a half. It's you know I sold the the condo in August of last year. Yeah, because you picked uh, up at the draft. Yeah, and um, you know just been renting from September until now, and yeah. you know just been keeping our eyes peeled. And you know we we went to see some houses in the past, and it just didn't work out. They were either too much or or you know just didn't work out because you know there was there was one that we liked, and we yeah. put an offer in it, but. I think I said two weeks ago we put five thousand over asking. It sold for forty thousand <laughs> over asking. Missed so it by that much. This by that much. Uh, yeah. And this one, um, you know, there's there was when we went to go for for viewing, uh, there was actually already, believe it or not, accept an offer oh. on the house. Yeah. And uh, our realtor said that he's like, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. You know, it's um, uh, I'll still take you on this viewing, but the you know the sellers actually accepted an offer. Two hours ago, and uh, we're like, "Oh, okay, uh, that's that's neat." And he, uh, anyways, so um, you know, we we went for the tour, and yeah. and you know, we liked the house, and we're just, at the same time, we were like, "Well, crap, you know, it's not much we can really do," and so we just didn't really think much about it. And the um, the day the day after, our realtor said, you know, the, the buyers decided to pull back on their offer, and. We're like, oh shit, you know, and he was like, but if they want to, it's like, he's like, but they also have another uh, person that's interested. So if you want to make an offer, I recommend you do it tonight. And yeah. he was like, he was like, do it by 8 p.m. I looked at my watch, uh, 7 15. I was like, oh shit, you know, we have to, <laughs> I have 45 minutes to decide if I want to put an offer on this yeah. house. Uh, and uh, anyway, so it was a very, uh, it was not, it's not often that uh, the wife and I, 
uh, go downstairs and sit on the couch and have a conversation for yeah. for forty five minutes about about it, and we just decided, you know what? Um, you miss this one, it may be a while before you well, find another one. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. it was a it's a nice neighborhood. It's quiet. Yeah. Um, it's it's close to Avery School. It's it's not in the country, which is what I wanted. But at the same time, it's so quiet. It feels like the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of families around. There's a park around the corner. Uh, Dobson's a ten minute walk away. What? Uh, so we were just like, you know what? It's listed at three, three sixty. Let's just be ballsy and and do three fifty five. And well, lo and behold, they accepted three fifty five. And nice. we we're like, okay, this is awesome. And uh, anyway, so we did all the paperwork. We sent uh, what felt like three fifty five. <laughs> my ba- my my bank statements for every single bank account yeah. I've had since I was 16 years old, yeah. uh, and it just got to the point where, you know, last uh, was it, a week or so ago, we did the inspection. Inspection, uh, you know, anytime you do an inspection, it's uh, there's going to be things that that need to be addressed right away. There's also things that can kind of be put off for a little bit. Uh, and you know, when I sat down with my realtor, he said, you know, you know, there's probably about $6,000 in, in repairs that need to be done, uh, in order for this house oh, yeah. to be, you know, in, in tip top shape. And he's like, Oh, you know, I'll go back to the sellers and see if they'll take the, you know, the price off a little bit. And, um, yeah, so we got basically another five grand off the house. Wow, that's a win. So, uh, yeah. So we went from three sixty. Down to three fifty five, and we settled at three fifty. So nice. it's we, you know, there was a lot of negotiation, and yeah. it's um, yeah, it's paid off. It was the same thing here. Just like remember that February night that it was like minus sixty with a wind chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Layla found this house at like uh, quarter after five. We were in to see it at like ten to six with Eric, and we had an offer on Saturday. Like nobody else saw this house. Like, yeah. It went quick. She wanted to be out of it. We wanted to be in it, and it went quick. And, yeah, it, buying a house is cool. What they don't tell you is the amount of money you pay yeah. before you buy the house. Yeah. And then, oh, on top of that, like two weeks later, your mortgage is due. Like, yeah. it's just like, yeah. I'm sorry, how much? I got a what? Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Uh, so much, again, man. two-time house owner. Yeah. Megan's first time owning a house. It's her first time. Nice. Yeah. So um, I spent. Excited. Sorry, what? She's excited. Well, I would hope so. Yeah. Close to her work. She's packed. <laughs> she's she packed start, she, she, she started packing the day we put an offer on. I was like, honey, you realize this is like step 0. 0.25 of, of yeah. the 10-step yeah. process? Yeah, and you hit that age where... She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and and you hit, like, as as we did, you hit that age where you're like, I'm not calling my friends to move. I'm calling movers to do this for yeah. me, and I'm going to enjoy this process. So, yeah, no, we... Uh, we booked some tickets. We are going on a trip this September, so your hosting duties. You may have to host the show by yourself. Um, we are headed down to Tampa to see oh. the Bucks and the Broncos. Nice. So in 2012, uh, Clint and I and our friend Aaron, who is a Colts fan, went down to Denver, drove down to Denver to see the Bucks and the Broncos play in Denver because mm-hmm. Peyton was quarterback then. And because of the scheduling, they play every conference once a year. Right. And then they play the division twice, uh, home and away, and then they play wherever they finish. That's how they finish the schedule. So it took from 2012 to 2024 for ten- for Denver in the rotation, the AFC West, to come to Tampa because the last time they were in Denver. So um, as soon as that came down, we knew we had to go, and the, s- the schedule came out last night, ordered our tickets right there, 400 bucks for three tickets up at the top, which isn't bad in Tampa. And then I looked around to see what other events are there. And said Toronto Blue Jays are in Tampa. Are in Tampa oh, nice. The twenty, the twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second. The Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not and bad. Clint's never been to a baseball game, so uh, the drop. I, yeah, I went and looked at the the Lightning too, just to see if the preseason starts around oh, yeah. then. So it might start around then. But yeah, so I'm getting to see the Jays for not being a Jays fan. You're I guess home opener weekend. Two. Or no. season opener weekend. F- <laughs> no, that's usually October. Season opener last yeah. the season opener was the weekend of the tw- yeah. the twenty uh, it was either twenty first twenty second that's the weekend we went to Sydney. Son of a. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Maybe they start in October, but yeah, no. 
Son of a... I didn't even think of that. I was so focused on seeing Tampa, but... Um, That's okay. I can yeah. go to Sydney by myself it's a, if it's a if, if Yeah, if they go yeah. back there. Um, but yeah, no, it's... From not being a Jays fan, mm-hmm. I'm going to two Jays games. Is, there you go. You know, I, uh, when you hear this, I will already have seen the Jays play and have my uh, Romano jersey. Um, hopefully we get there early enough to, go to go see it. Uh, so, yeah. This is the time you may want to follow us on. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Gabby won. Next Level Chef. Yes. Yes, yeah, she did. We finally Very figured good. out it was Christine. Yeah. <laughs> And to watch the episode to figure it out, but um, and yeah, and Master Chef gets kicked off. So, mm-hmm. and I was two of the last three years. I took Bailey. Yeah, she won. Yeah. I again, you yeah. said put money on it, and I might have to do that yeah, next. Yeah. So, are you done with that show forever? Not forever. You just gonna no. take uh take some time away, and maybe yeah. next year see how it goes. I watched the finale when I was there. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So don't forget to, as always, you can follow us on the social medias: Twitter, Moncton Wildcast, Instagram, Wildcast Podcast, TikTok, Wildcast Podcast, and of course, like and smash the subscribe button on our YouTube. And don't forget to click the little bell so you're notified as we get closer to the QMJHL draft, June seventh and eighth. I got a quick question for you. It's real quick. Ooh. It's real quick. Who gets their license first, Avery or Megan? <laughs> And this stems from the announcement where you had to you had to take Megan to work. You weren't sure if you're going to get there. And I said to Layla, I was like, I wonder who gets their license first, Avery or well, Megan? Uh, <laughs> let me see. So I got both their names on the show. There's actually, well, Megan's sister is actually coming down for a visit uh, during our move. Yeah. And she messaged me the other day and she's like, can we just secretly book Megan a road test? Nice. Without, without Megan knowing, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, we absolutely can. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's probably going to happen. If she passes, she passes. If she fails, well, try again. She tried again, yeah. Yep. Exactly. So what is Avery now? Eight? Be nine. She's going to be nine in November. She's creeping up there, eh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. When do you guys it's go scary. to Ontario again? After the draft, uh, right? Oh, yeah. We're leaving on the 19th of July. Oh, the July. Okay. I thought it was yep. June. All right. All right, I guess there's probably some news that people want to talk about, eh? Let's maybe ish. Maybe. All right, let's let's get to what it. The then. hell happened? <laughs> I have no idea. News and notes Plank. from around the queue. All right, news and notes from around the queue, presented by Integrity Lawn Care. Looking for to do some spring cleanup this long weekend or? This weekend coming up, uh, don't know where to start or just really don't want to do it by yourself. Uh, accepting new clients right now. Give them a call at 506-866-8218 or Integrity Lawn Care at Hotmail.com or check out their Instagram, Integrity Lawn Care. You know what you need with lawn care? What's that? Is you need a gardener <laughs> and we got one. And we do got one. <laughs> YMCA. That is on file. <laughs> that is exactly how excited we are to get to the news that all the Memorial Cup teams are set. Um, I'm not going to lie. When we decided to do this show, knowing that I was going on holidays for the next week when this mm-hmm. comes out, I was like, yep. I don't know if we're going to have Memorial Cup times. But luckily, all the series, for the first time in history, all sweeps as the Knights destroy the Generals. The Warriors beat the Winter Hawks. And I think it's a surprise to most people that Drummondville swept Bay Como. I, I, it was a surprise to me. I know we both picked Bay Como, but a sweep well, I think was a surprise. I think uh, a sweep in all three was uh, yeah was a yeah, surprise, yeah. right? It's but hey, if that's an indication, we're in for a pretty damn good Memorial Cup. Yeah, sucks uh, to be you, Saginaw. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's this like, is going to be an uber oh. competitive uh, uh, tournament and. You know, the hosts always seem to find a way to yeah. to get up for these games. And so we'll see. You know, uh, Saginaw is no slouch. And um, I think they'll be maybe not right there with the teams. But, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be in contention. But, you know, it, there's there's talk about, um, you know, will the, will the Q win again? You know, will, they, will this be five, four or five? five. Or, the five drive or, for five. The drive for five. Uh, Hell of a you, shot. Yeah, they've, uh, there's a team over there in Drummondville that's that's got the opportunity to, to do it. And um, what they're doing with, you know, their GM in his first his first year on the job is is pretty uh, pretty spectacular. I don't think they're regretting that uh, that hire. No, I don't think they're regretting the coach Dude, hire either. No, no, I loved. Uh, Wait a, third. a minute, a first year co first year there coach. Yeah, first year GM. First year GM. Hmm. Champions. 
Hmm. Yeah. It's hmm. a hell of a formula. Yeah. Right. Imagine. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Anyways. Um, so there's, um, you know what? I've, there's obviously going to be a lot of people who think Drummondville will win this. Um, I, I, you know, I'm always the kind of the oddball here. Um, <laughs> what? I, I like to ch- switch it up a little bit. Our buddy Drew Bear asked me, uh, actually, after game one of each series, he was like, who do you think is going to win the Memorial Cup? I said, well, <laughs> let's, let's find let's, out the let's teams get, first. Let's get some teams there first, yeah. right? And um, believe it or not, my answer to him was, the final would be Moose Jaw against London. Oh. And uh, I think I'm going to stick with that. I think I'll stick with Moose Jaw against London in the final. That's uh, that's a pretty good... Uh, I'm putting London in the final. Mm-hmm. Um with what they did to Oshawa, and you got to feel bad for Oshawa. They lost six of their last seven games while in the like while making it to the final. Now, yeah. early on, the talk was they lost a lot three veterans. I think yeah, in did. the first couple games, which I mean, it's going to hurt against anybody. But when you're going up against a powerhouse like London, it's pretty tough mm. uh, to come back from that. But uh, what they score, I'll score them like thirty five to one or, or thirty five to four or something stupid like that. Yeah, like every time I turned the TV on, it was four one, five one, six one. Um, so I got London in the final again. Saginaw and London have the advantage with the Memorial Cup being in the OHL. They don't mm. play back to back games, so yeah. the Q plays back to back the twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and then the WHL plays back to back the twenty seventh, twenty eighth. I think we will get a tiebreaker game. I think it'll be Saginaw and Moose Jaw, but I've got London and uh, Drummondville in the final. Nice. Um, and I just find it tough to bet against Bradley Mercer. Mm. And in a short tournament, goaltending-wise, I know London's goalie, who I don't have off the top of my head, is very good. Um, and that team is very good. But with – and call it recency bias from what we what we see. Um, now I watched the London series, and I watched a lot of the Big Homo series as well. These are two fast, very good teams, and I think uh, I think we've got uh, I think we've got a heck of a final. So I'm going to go with Drummondville over London. I think we are nice. going to get the drive for five. We're going to get it. All right, let's. Uh, and what did you pick? I picked. Uh, I'm actually going to go Moose Jaw over London. You're going Moose Jaw. Yeah. Oh, that's well, exciting. I love the small towns. I love the small wow. towns. All righty. Yes, producer Kyle says London. <laughs> Um, I guess let's uh, let's get to our news, eh? Mm-hmm. The actual news people want to hear. Mm-hmm. All right, the news that everyone wants us to get to. We finally have a new head coach. We have a new GM. Uh, as Mr. Irving put the rumors to rest last Wednesday, and after listening to our show using Swifty song titles, it's a new era uh, for the Moncton Wildcats as they hired Taylor McDougal as the general manager and UMB legend Gardner McDougal uh, as the head coach of our Moncton Wildcats. We're gonna get to our reaction shortly. But uh, now it's time to bring a very special guest making his Wildcast podcast debut, the brand new general manager and director of hockey operations, Taylor McDougal. Taylor, welcome to the show. A whirlwind 24 hours for you. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's a pleasure, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. No, no problem. Uh, I guess just first and foremost, I mean, just walk us through the process of how this kind of came together. I know that Jeremy for years has been saying it would never happen with, with your dad, obviously as a coach, but you know, a lot of people were focused on that. And then how did it come together with you as, as the brand new general manager going from player to player agent? And now of course being the general manager. Yeah, it, it's uh, as you alluded to it, it's a whirlwind. So it's, it's almost hard to reflect on it in terms of the, uh, the process because it was uh, um, it, it happened fast, but it, it it's also a very, very exciting one so um yeah i guess kind of to try and put which one came first would be would be difficult just because i kind of i can't recollect to be totally honest with you um but we were uh um you know my my dad and i were kind of conversing about about the possibility and we're fortunate to to have the opportunity to converse on that and it and it be a possibility in the first place um and and I think the original conversation was was just that kind of a kind of a conversation. And, you know, that would be what an opportunity that would be and, and be fun. But I think the fact that we were both in in places that we were so that we were so happy and so fortunate to be in our in our own right probably mm-hmm. probably made that 
kind of just to con- just kind of a fun conversation at the time if I, if I'm being honest but the more um, the more we each got exposed to to Mr. Irving's kind of vision and and obviously we're we're been New Brunswickers for a long time so we're familiar with the passion and and the resources that, that go into the Moncton Wildcats organization but I think just the more familiar we we became with that and and kind of the more real it became and and the more conversations we could have with um primarily Mr. Irving but each other and, and also people that are that are involved in the organization right now and and people who have been exposed to the organization in the past I think it just um yeah like I said it it, it happened fast but there was also you know a lot of conversations that uh that went into it and, and kind of as, as each conversation was was more and more positive i think the idea became more and more real and here here we are today yeah and i guess in recent years uh, you know specifically in the nhl we've we've seen you know some jump from you know the agency side to the hockey upside you know like emily castonguay with the canucks and you know bill zito with mm-hmm. the panthers and kent hughes with the canadians what was your inspiration you know, to do the same? And is this something you're kind of looking to follow as an avenue, uh, as a career? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I can pursue it. But at, uh, um, you know, as you alluded to, like, like there has been that, there has been that jump. Um, and, and all the individuals you mentioned, I think have, have done very well in those, in those chairs. Like, like they've all been, uh, um, you know, they've been a they've been a good advocate for kind of making the switch because they, they've all done pretty well for the most part, right? And, and there's others that we didn't mention that would kind of be more, um, because I do have I do have a legal background as well, and so there's there's a whole host of individuals who have made that jump and, and just kind of strictly legal or, or cap roles on on that side of things as well. So, um, I guess that's to say it wasn't a foreign idea, um, wasn't something that I was considering imminently, and and that's largely because of just kind of how happy I was where where I was working prior and and uh just kind of how how strong of a relationship I had with the person I was working for um but the fact that that you you know you start looking at uh at all these factors that that Moncton has to offer and and has to offer to our situation and um you know just being from being from New Brunswick and you know the the Wildcats are you know they're a pretty special thing so so get to get an opportunity to be involved in that and, and have some responsibility and and just kind of protecting and, and expanding upon that reputation like that's a uh, uh, that's a pretty cool thing to, to consider and then and then you put in the other factors that are in play and yeah like i said it, it became pretty pretty real pretty fast and i feel very fortunate with the opportunity yeah, so Pat McNeil, who uh, we'll have on later in the show, uh, he's a play-by play-by-play voice for the K. Brighton Eagles. Yeah. You know the team. You know used to you played for during your time as a, as a player. Uh, you know I asked him uh, what you were like on the ice. You know, and he said, you know, you're hardworking. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said you're hardworking. Uh, you know, you play an honest style hockey. You're accountable, and you know you're you're an all-around character guy. Uh, is that what you're looking uh, to see from uh, from the players here in Moncton? Yeah, I, I think I think every every player is going to have their own unique assets and traits. You know what I mean? As a player, um, but a lot of what you described is it will will be what we're looking for in people. You know, like, like I think you evaluate and get to know the person first, and then you and then you can evaluate the the player. And and to your question, I hope I hope our players have a lot better traits than I did as players <laughs> you know what I mean but at, at the same time um, we're absolutely looking for for quality people and hard-working people and and competitive people because it is a you know you, you have to have good good values because there's there's inevitably ups and downs throughout the year and and you know talent takes you so far but your it's kind of your character and your values that that gets you through those moments and, and helps you embrace those moments. So that's cer- certainly qualities we'll be, uh, we'll be looking for. I should say that Pat also mentioned that you were not flashy, but I respectively decided not to throw that part into the <laughs> question. I, pre- I appreciate that, but he's, <laughs> that was, that was an accurate description. Pat, Pat's a good, uh, he's a good scout. Um, I guess uh, I'm assuming you haven't had much time to kind of assess this roster. 
um, and kind of what you're looking for in a roster. And I know we've we've had the the former GM Richie on a few times and and talked about how you build a draft board together and, and set things up and what picks you have and. You know, it's a cup or bust kind of year that you guys are jumping into. And, you know, we alluded to it earlier, Drummondville, first time GM, first time coach with that team. They had some success, so we're kind of thinking maybe. Um, but uh, have you talked to the scouts? Have you started to put a draft board together? I guess just how was the how has the transition been from Richie, who we've had on a few times, to now you for the draft board as we get ready for the draft in about three weeks? Yeah, no, it, it's a quick one, and, and that's part of the reason I am where I am right now. Is I spent the day with, uh, um, with with a couple of our scouts and, and our head scout and Alex Gauthier, and and you just want to, again, you, you want to familiarize yourself with them, and and they've done, they've been working all year, so so ultimately they're, uh, that, that's why you have a head scout anyway, but um, particularly in in this season, you know, the, they'll, their opinion is is always heavily relied upon but mm. in particular in particular this year right um and, and again it's just kind of we we absolutely have to expedite some processes but we can't we can't cheat those processes either and right. and they're it's about getting it's, it's about getting to know them as people and just kind of what they look for in players and they've done a great job of drafting in the uh um in the past so um have a lot of trust in them and i also have a, a prior working relationship with these guys too right like obviously it was it was a different dynamic but it wasn't like i was the the personalities that i'm getting to know it's not like i'm i'm meeting them for the first time we, sure, we had yeah. a working relationship prior to, to me accepting this role and just the last one there taylor before we let you go um at the unb press conference uh I put down Gardner. I don't know if I should call him Gardner or your dad or, or what, what I should, what <laughs> I should call him. Mr. 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 McDougal. Uh, you know, he, he, he's in my, he's in my phone as coach. So whatever. Rolls coach, okay. Let's, All right. Let's, let's, put him, let's say coach. Yeah. Right. You heard it here first, everyone. Yeah. It's so, coach. <laughs> uh, coach referred to you as a uh, master recruiter. Um, so with that being said, uh, without giving away any, any secrets, could we see some surprises on the Wildcats roster next season? Um, you, you never know, right? Like, and I don't think uh, it's funny. They're recruiting, every, everybody pick or everybody always pictures it being associated with with selling or being some sort of sales pitch. And I, I think of it as just kind of just expressing kind of what you believe in and, and what you believe to be true and and what you're passionate about. And in the Moncton Wildcats case, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot to be passionate about and, and a lot to to offer players um we want moncton as it has been in the past we, we want moncton to be a place that everybody wants to play in right. right and so we want to uh we want to educate those players on on just kind of what what our goals are moving forward both both imminently but also long term for for them as players for them as people and and also for just for the the area of moncton too right like we we're we're fortunate to live in the place that we do so um we just want to educate players on how fortunate we are to have what we have and, and how we want them to be, uh, want them to be a part of it. And, and if we do that correctly, then I think, you know, I think it can be a pretty convincing place to come play. Um, but in terms of what, what that has in store for the future, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Perfect, man. Well, we really appreciate, uh, you dropping in and taking some time to, uh, to, to spend with us, uh, as, as I'm sure, like I said, it's been a whirlwind, a uh, few hours for you, a few days. Um, Congrats again, and, and good luck at the draft. And hopefully during that time, if you've got some time, we'll, we'll be there and live and maybe have you on to assess some of the picks or some of the quote-unquote surprises that uh, that you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no pressure, though. Eh? Yeah. But yeah, it sounds, uh, <laughs> so, sounds good, guys. I, uh, I really appreciate all your support. Perfect. Right. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it seems like he's got it figured out. For the 48 hours, that was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fact that he gave us the time, seriously, we honestly truly appreciate that and what's been a very hectic time for him for sure. But um, it's an exciting time. It really is. Uh, you know, when uh, on that radio hit I did with uh, on K94, you know, I, I said, and I'm, I, I stick to it, you know, I think yeah. this is maybe top three in terms of most memorable moments as you know as a wildcats fan you know i think number one is when we were awarded the memorial cup yeah um and i think you can probably maybe combine you know the the 06 and 2010 championships as as another one and 
And then this, you know, yeah. there's uh, there's not very many moments as you know Wildcats fans that that will top being able to get not only Taylor McDougal but also Gardner McDougal or yeah. Coach Coach. Yeah. Uh, so that's um, it's a very very exciting time, and you know we're three months away from from training camp and mm. four months away from the season, so. Uh, it's it's going to be a very very quick turnaround, and it's going to be quite the training camp, I think. Yeah. Like from everything I hear, and, and you kind of almost feel bad when when talking to him because all of the hype was about Gardner. Can mm-hmm. they get Gardner? He's been trying to get Gardner. We got Gardner, and it's like, yeah, we also got a general manager too. Yeah. So you know, again, very blessed for him to join us, and you know, hopefully this is a start of a beautiful friendship. And um, you know, we we eased him in. Now he's going to get the fastballs. Now he's going to get the curveballs, and uh, we'll see what we uh, see what we get from him as he gets ready for his first uh, QMJHL draft in a couple of weeks. But uh, again, that was just one of four guests. Let's uh, let's hammer on this and let's uh, let's get to a view from the other. Let's see if I got the soundboard up. Uh, I'm all messed up from trying to make sure the guest. Uh, there it is. Let's get to the view from the other bench. And I turned it down. View from the other bench. View from the other bench. All right, from one podcast debut to another, uh, we continue our draft preview now. The Maritime Division. This time, we go to the island, uh, and we have a first-time guest. Uh, he is the game day operations and communications manager for the Charlottetown Islanders, Taylor Stewart. Taylor, uh, first of all, thanks for doing this. As I'm sure it's getting uh, kind of busy for you as the draft gets closer. Just how's it going? Oh, not too bad. We're uh, we're getting things together now in the office. You know, small crew, but we're getting everything organized from the reception. Coach and staff started their player interviews, so the ball is rolling, and we're we're excited to get to Moncton. So obviously, um, you know, it's it's Holton hockey out there in the island, and and he's been around for for a bit doing both both uh, jobs there. So. Um, as he prepares for a draft and in, in what's kind of the next step season, you guys started your rebuild and now you're kind of making that push. Um, where is this team in terms of how this draft's going to go for uh, for Islanders fans? In terms of how it's going to go, I think people can be excited for what we've got and the work. Oh, we lost you. Of... We lost you there for a minute. Yep, there we are. Awesome. Yeah, so I, uh, I know Jim and Gee, they're doing play interviews now. We, we don't have a first-round pick this year due to deals in the past, but I know they're doing their, their research and are excited about where we sit right now in the draft. And in terms of in the future, we just signed Donald Dickey there at the Newfoundland. He'll be down next season. So that fills a big hole that we had uh, over the past couple of years now, having a solidified goaltender, a young guy to come in and really join the ranks of where this team's at in terms of age as well as Joined two other Newfoundland boys that he knows signed on, and just the general development of our prospects. You know, getting Marcus Kiersey another year, getting Anthony Flanagan, who had a uh, decent rookie campaign, giving him another year, and Matthew Butler and Ross Campbell and those guys, just giving the core a chance to have a good offseason and mesh together, and then maybe add one or two more uh, key pieces in the offseason here. And I think next season is going to be really competitive and exciting hockey for sure. Yeah, looking at the uh, at the draft board for for the Islanders, uh, like you said, no first round pick. Uh, from what I'm seeing, no second round pick either. Uh, first pick will be in the third round. Uh, I guess how difficult does that make it for a team like Charlottetown, given you know where they are in their in in their in their build? Uh, you know, to not have a first or a second, and they have to work with uh, with what's left on the board board uh, come the third round. I don't think it's really been a, a huge issue for Jim in the past, as you've seen from other draft prospects and other picks they've made. Uh, come like round three through even eight, they've really found some key guys to add to the roster. Ross Campbell was a middle of the round kind of guy. Matthew Butler didn't go until round four. So it's it's really more so about the interviews and how they go, and then just about what Jim and them see and, and the prospects that we can get when we're drafting. Because, like I just said, as you've seen from their roster there. We got a lot of guys who will be coming into this core next year that weren't necessarily a first or a second round pick. So I, I think the whole staff and the entire Charlotte Islanders organization and their fans should have good faith that despite not having a first or second round pick, Jim and he 
Ritchie and the rest of the staff there will be able to find some, some more diamonds in the rough or some guys that maybe split past some other teams' boards, but fall to us and then turned into really, really good prospects down the road for us. The uh, the decor the decor that you guys got I mean it's obviously built around Kiersey and you had Topolnitsky and and talk about your first round pick last year in, in Owen Conrad and just kind of the steps he took this year and you know what that pair can do in in a couple of years when you guys are just kind of pushing the uh, the envelope. Owen Conrad had a, a tremendous rookie campaign in my opinion and I think the organization I know Jim and the guys were really happy with what they saw for him as a 16 year old you know he's a he's a big body right. And, Yep. Coming in at 60 and the Q is not the easiest for anybody in terms of their development, but Owen came in with a bang, had two overtime winners back-to-back at the start of the year. Slowed, slowed down a little bit throughout the remainder, but he's a guy that they're really excited about. He's, he's a big defenseman, which in terms of nowadays Q, big defenseman notes don't come easy, so it's, it's nice to have him in the ranks. And I know that they're really open. We had that Cormier-Lowen pairing in the past, and I think that that's kind of the hope is that, not to say they won't be as good as Blount or Cormier, but the hope is that uh, if everything goes well, that Kiersey and Conrad could eventually end up being like our next Cormier, Lau, and Perry. You got a really big guy in, Cor- in Conrad there that can not only play offensively, but he's got a good defensive mind to him. Frank is the same same way. He's an elite offensive talent. Despite his small stature, he's still really good at the – at defending, he's got a really good hockey IQ. So they're really excited to see what this offseason holds for Owen in terms of just his, his workouts, his development, because they know they know what they have in him. And if he works on getting that foot speed up just a little bit more, they're they're really excited. We all are really excited to see what he can turn into. Yeah, one uh, one of the guys in the back end, uh, Toplanitsky, is obviously going into his 19-year-old season, uh, and could garner some interest you know from some of the contending teams this year in terms of uh you know a, a five six uh, depth uh, defenseman that might even get you guys into the you know uh, into the second round do you see any urgency in moving him to maybe move up in the draft or is he more of uh you know let's hang on to him for until at least christmas and uh and, and see what the price is like then I don't really feel that there's been any urgency surrounding the organization. I know Jim and Gee, they're really interested in looking just what's out there. They're not necessarily going to shut the door on any deal if it's good enough, like any hockey coach or any GM would tell you. If, if someone comes knocking, they're going to listen, obviously. But uh, I don't I don't feel there's been a sense of urgency around this team, no, to get a, to get a deal done. They're comfortable where we are right now. we got a, a blueprint laid out, and if – Things can happen, as always, in hockey, but right now I think it's just kind of stick to the blueprint, and if the right deal at the right time comes along, then we'll see what happens. So I guess just the uh, just, just the last one from us. Uh, I mean, we usually see you on those videos trying to get the fans excited, get the tickets sold. Uh, just what is the appetite uh, for this for this team? Uh, I know you guys were a little bit of sellers, small sellers at the deadline last year, and no picks in the first couple rounds, which happens when you kind of go all in. Um, but I guess just what's the appetite of the fan, of the fans on the island uh, for this for this upcoming draft and, and upcoming season? Obviously, like you said, there we were we were big sellers there for a while. We've never really gone through a total rebuild like this last year. Here was kind of like tearing down to the studs, you know. And yeah. we haven't really seen a lot of that on the island lately. We've been really fortunate to have a lot of highly competitive Charles and Islander hockey teams. But despite the fact that we might not have been at the top of the standings, uh, we set a new record this past season in attendance in terms of games over 3,000. We had 11 straight games over 3,000 fans in the seat. So the appetite for hockey is there. People people were out in bunches supporting us this past year, and we were greatly appreciative of it. And I think it's just going to keep rolling. We've had we had a lot of good uptake, as I mentioned earlier, with Don Dickey signing. A lot of people got engaged with that post and got excited to know that there's a goalie of the future now. We've had a long list of really good, good goaltending come through the island, and I think they're excited just to see that that next guy up is kind of is here and he's coming down this next season. Season tickets, they've been going out the door fairly well. We're obviously still pushing. You're always going to be pushing to try and, yeah. try and bring more people into the rink, but in terms of just general fan interest we've seen a lot of really really positive stuff on our social media in terms of 
ticket sales, post engagements, and like I said, with last year's ticket sales over the 3,000 mark and 11 straight games. I mean, if people people want to come out for when we're rebuilding, then they're obviously going to want to keep coming out. We're more competitive, and we have more of a, a chance out there in the ice. Yeah, uh, and and we're tired of playing you. I'll be honest with you. Um, it's always tough games, and they always go to overtime. So um, we know what we're in for when we're playing Holton Hockey. So we are tired of playing you guys. So hopefully we get a few more W's uh, this year against you because we know it's it's going to be a, a lean couple yeah. of years. But again, Taylor, thanks for joining us and uh, making your podcast debut. And obviously, uh, hope to see you at the drafts in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you then. Peace and thanks for having me on. No problem. Thank thanks, Taylor. Thank you. All right, back-to-back guest debuts. Now we go to, uh, well, you know him. You love him. He's from the North Shore. He's got about 15 podcasts, so he's all over social media. And he's third on the list for the most guest appearances, Mr. Johnny Rocket. How are you, buddy? Well, uh, I was awesome, but I'm kind of disappointed in that I'm third on the list. Uh, I know. That's kind of a loser number, so I'll have to get up that list for sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm doing great. What about you guys? Uh, well, uh, I mean, as you've seen on social media, we, we've had some things to talk about that, well, you're tired of us talking about, eh? Well, uh, so people, I, I know guys have a lot of new fans. Uh, my last name is not McDougal, but I can still put on a heck of a show. So let's get ready. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we tried to uh, get you second, but Pat keeps coming to one. Every time he knows you're on the show, he's like, I got to do it. I got to keep my lead up. So unfortunately you, key Breton guy. <laughs> yeah you can take that up with him at the draft i guess man the draft is coming up but let's just quickly talk about the run that uh, bathurst went on um get, sweep in halifax getting to the second round uh a sweep against bay como but it was it was a lot closer than uh than i think the scores would indicate and a sweep would indicate just talk about quickly the end of the end of the season for bathurst well, first of all, I think uh, Bathurst was the biggest opposition of Bicomo except Drummondville, so that's kind of nice because all the other <laughs> yeah. all the other series were like so one sided, um, and the one with Halifax, I mean, yeah, it was realistic to say that the Titan had a chance, but yeah. to sweep them in four games, I mean, that was unfreaking real. Um, a lot of experience that uh, our young guys were not supposed to get, but they got, which is freaking awesome. Um, so eight games in the playoff for uh, most of our 16 and 17 guys is like above and beyond what we were expecting. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for us, I mean, everything was uh, really good. Um, obviously, we would have loved like maybe one win against Big Amo at home just for the fun of it, but they were still pretty tight game, pretty uh, well fought. And uh, this season was, in my book, way better than i thought <laughs> does that kind of lead into next season where you know obviously your expectations are are going to go up uh and i know you guys are getting a couple guys that uh i know ford and, and a defenseman that's going to help your help your roster is uh we're looking at where you're at right now uh you know you're probably gonna have two possibly three first round picks uh, how's this team going to look next year? And where do you think it's going to, I guess, compare with uh, with the likes of Moncton and Shakutami and Cape, Cape Breton, Breton and Ramuski and, and the uh, whole damn Eastern Conference, yeah. apparently? Well, uh, I mean, I, I'll be deadly honest. Nobody in the Eastern has a chance against the Titan next season. We're going to finish first and screw you guys. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I mean, I hey, think this season was kind of odd because so many guys, like, overperform what they were supposed to do. Uh, Rollins and Orr, obviously, every, everybody in the league knows them by now. Um, and Huggin came out of nowhere, had his career year. Uh, we got a random goalie, uh, a, a random French goalie that came aboard and played his ass off, especially in the playoff. Um, all those guys except Huggins, well, more than like, well, Orr and Rollins are gone for sure. But uh, Keller still has that. Uh, Tiny chance of coming back as a 20 over uh, an overager European, which would be the perfect scenario in my book because I I don't want to say that and sound negative, but I think that people might see us a different way that they are supposed to see us. I think we will have maybe a little bit of decrease next year. Um, not, I mean, we'll make the playoff. I can't see that not happening, but I think people are maybe putting us ahead of where we are in our uh, rebuild. 
um, which is in year two officially. Um, definitely uh, Pettigrew and Belanger La Belge will have like bigger ice time, bigger um, stuff to do. And our first pick, well, two of our first round pick this year will more than likely make the team depending who they are. And maybe our second will also do it. Um, but yeah, in terms of next season, if we do the same, if we finish in the same place that we did this year, for me, it will be a win. If we finish over 11, it will be like a really big surprise for me. But I'm kind of expecting a little bit of a drop, maybe like around like 14, 13, because our team will be really young next year. And it's, it's just normal. This year, a lot of guys overperform and we got some points that we we're not supposed to get, especially after Christmas, where we traded like four of our 19-year-old and some pretty awesome offensive player so everybody was expecting us to crumble but we did the total opposite so it's it's kind of a weird year so i hope people are not like upset if we have an a lower or same year uh, as the last year for this year yeah I, i i i think you're kind of probably fifth in the division uh, or in the conference oh sorry. yeah for sure um which is <laughs> kind of where you you finish based on what's coming down but i mean you guys are getting some i mean Your, your team's been the one that's had the rumors the most. I mean, we heard one for Ramuski, haven't heard much out of Moncton. But, um, I mean, you touched on it there with, with goaltending, um, with Keller and Fleming. Um, are they both there till Christmas? And kind of like last year, see what Fleming can get you at the deadline for a team that's kind of maybe not happy with their goaltending or looking to improve on their goaltending? Or do you kind of see it as you know, Keller's the 20 in the Euro and it's his show and we can move Fleming at the draft for an extra second or a third. I think you guys got like 45 selections or something this, <laughs> this weekend. Like it's a good thing. It's close for you to be here, but um, what do you see between the pipes? Well, first off, I, I sure hope that Keller will be back. Um, nothing has been confirmed yet. Uh, when he left after our elimination, Uh, I, I know where he was living, his billet family, and they basically said that a goodbye. It was a goodbye for them. But so I guess something happened back in France that he was supposed to make an ex-team from Program France, and he did not make that team, and everything changed from that point on. Now he has a bigger chance to come back. But if he comes back, I don't see – well, I don't see why he wouldn't be like – our number one goaltender. I mean, nothing against Fleming, but this year he definitely lost his number one spot to Keller. Um, I can see keeping both of them up until Christmas, but uh, I don't I don't really like that But because I want to build for the future and I have a big feeling that the Titan will pick uh, a goalie this year high in the draft, like probably in the second round. Um, and I really want to have that guy as a backup next year to get experience hopefully behind Keller. Um, and basically if they're keeping Keller and Fleming, that guy will be the third string, yeah. basically not getting dressed, like not playing pretty much all, all the, all the year, because if you keep Fleming, you're obviously going to tell them, tell them that when Keller is not in the net, you are in the net because <laughs> what would be the point of him staying with the team for just for the fun of it. So my best case scenario is Keller's coming back and X guy got drafted is the backup. And worst case scenario, Keller is not coming back. Fleming gets the pole position, and we still have a good backup in a, a rookie. And hopefully that Fleming will have a better year than he got last year. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. I guess the outside chance you can trade Keller if they're both back before Christmas too, right? Like if there's yeah. an injury and there's a spot, you can move a Euro and a 20 before the deadline. So there, there's that Wait, third it's option. It's just right? that. I know, yeah, obviously Keller would have, like, the higher upset in terms of draft, like, capital. Yeah. Uh, but next year, there's so many good goaltenders out there. So I don't think, like, there would be, like, any big value, especially that Keller would be considered a Euro and an overager. True, yeah, yeah. So, and, and between you and I, again, it's nothing against Fleming, but I don't think that guy has any value on the market. Um, I mean, any like reasonable value. I mean, you could probably get like a six, seven or oh, yeah. eight round picks for him, but what's the point of keeping that for, for that? So that's off. got a first round pick. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, don't say yeah. that, <laughs> but he was not 20. <laughs> that's that's, that's, true, true. that's yeah, true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. 
No, look at yeah. the draft boards. Uh, Baffler's first pick is uh, looks like ninth overall. Uh, do you yep. see it more as a uh, positional pick or uh, best player available? Well, any draft guy will say it's definitely the best player available. <laughs> and between you and I, we have needs definitely up front. We need talent up front. Um, we also need a young up-and-coming goalie. But at nine, it, there's no goalie reasonably that uh, we will pick at that place. So that definitely won't, will be a forward. Um, I can also see a defenseman, but... He will more than likely not make the team next year because all our players are coming back and we're basically switching Igor and Bramway uh, for, uh, fuck it, I'm going to say his name because it's already out there, Francois-James Buteau from Rouen Oranda. What? So our, de our defense will be copy-paste. So why would you keep a 16-year-old rookie f like at eight? Uh, so he basically yeah. goes uh, upstairs and watch like, 60 of the 64 game next <laughs> next year so um yeah unless unless dwyer turns things around and trade some guys at defense uh, for assets uh and then all of a sudden there's spots one or two spots for um a rookie which at this point there's none so that's why i think they will pick a forward with the ninth pick and maybe with the 18th pick they will pick a defense but We'll see uh, where that lands. Maybe we'll, we'll trade that pick. Maybe we'll have another first-round pick. Uh, I can't wait to go to Moncton, to be <laughs> honest with you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, we're very excited to have you here screaming every six picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah! yeah! Oh, jeez. <laughs> and you, you, you guys know how passionate I am. I already have my what? list of players I want a Titan to draft, so... All the players that will get drafted, not from the Titan, I will just be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we will. Uh, we're, there's a potential we're we're gonna go live at some point in the first round. So uh, if we do that, we need you. Uh, we need your beautiful <laughs> face to to pop on our YouTube. But uh, just the last one, I guess. Um, unbelievable season ahead of expectations for the fans. Um, it's a tough market up there. I know the game that we were at. Uh, the building was pretty full. Um, now, our bus load was half your fans. But when that building was going, that building is loud uh, for us being it there is. the first time. I guess just the what's the fan expectation? What's the fan level excitement as we get into the draft and into the upcoming season? Well, basically, at this point, I think all the fans, all the real fans of the tight end can't wait for the announcement of the team being sold to new owners, which will happen in the next few weeks. Uh, to know who they are, to know what they want to do with Wait, did like, you just the bury arena, the lead? What? Did, did, we, what? did we just bury the lead? Do you know who it is? Can you break news that's coming out or what? Well, it's going to happen before the draft. I can guarantee you that. All right, cool. Um, yeah. So I can't, I can't say who it is because I don't have names, but I know that the Hurts and Youngs thing that the Titan announced a few months ago turned like uh, really well, uh, better than expected. Uh, and there is no more doubts in my mind that this team is here to stay and this new ownership group or person or couple or whoever it is uh, is going to put money and love in this club and that's exactly what this team needs. A, bit, uh, a team that can actually work social medias and make sense with the social media, you understand how marketing works, getting some better bigger sponsors that are not in the region like more national kind of stuff and that's exactly what they bring on the table so i honestly think that in the next few weeks when everything will be announced like obviously the group that is here now saved the team because without them this team would have been gone like more than 10 years ago yeah uh so i sure hope that everybody will thank them for all their hard work, especially during COVID, and welcome like we're th with their arms wide open, the new group that will arrive and put some love in the Titan. So, optimism is my word, basically. Perfect, man. Well, uh, we are excited to see you in a couple weeks. Um, oh yes, me too. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an excellent time, and you guys own you guys basically own the draft, kind of like we did last year. So, um, yep. it's an exciting time. Again, thanks for joining us on. Uh, this episode sir and uh yeah we will see you in a couple weeks talk to you police have a great show guys thank you all right and we saved the best of the division uh 
for last, and he owns the second spot in most guest appearances from Hockey Island, the voice of the Cape Breton Eagles, Pat McNeil. Pat, how are you? Doing well. I'll be better when I move into the number one spot. So I'll do what I need to do, and hopefully by the end of 24-25, uh, that crown is mine. Yeah, that's uh, that's the exact same reaction that uh, Johnny Rocket had. He's like, I'm only third. I'm like, well, every time you come on, Pat wants to be on, and every time Pat comes on, Tozer comes on. So you, you guys, I'm gonna just... have to hide from Johnny Rocket now. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit scared of him. Yeah, exactly. No offense, Johnny. I do like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, looking back before we look ahead, you guys had a uh, a hell of a year, and um, you know, Jeremy and I had said if if you'd have told us when we came up that weekend, uh, the home opener weekend that the Cape Breton Eagles would be in the third round against Bay Como. I'd ask you what you were smoking and, and uh, see if I could try some, but uh, what a turnaround. Uh, it, and it starts off the ice, which turned on the ice or, you know, it just, what a turnaround. Just talk about the, the end of the season didn't end the way you wanted to, but uh, let's talk about the year in general. Yeah, it was great. And as you said, talking about that opening weekend against Moncton, you guys would as much as anyone outside of Cape Breton have a real appreciation for the, turnaround of the season and that was even yeah and the town hall louis robitaille was talking about that he had talked about how all year long and it's one of these things coaches say a lot so sometimes it comes across as cliche not about how you start how you finish not a result process etc cetera, etc cetera. but this is one of those years how the year played out that really kind of came to fruition a lot of excitement was built there was a lot of changes in the organization at the beginning with louis robitaille comes in and sylvain couture was in his second year then you had some off ice changes obviously uh, the eagles social media i think was the talk of the league so uh, kudos to brad chandler carter mcgillery and everyone else involved in that so that was a lot of fun throughout the year and if things kind of snowballed a bit of a perfect storm where you the pieces come together and then you get hot and then a couple of the teams ahead of you fall and it all came together for quite a magical spring it's not very often it's one thing to have a dark horse team not a huge dark horse but a bit, a bit of a dark horse find its way to the third round but to go in there with an eight and one record in your first two rounds after yeah. winning your last nine games pretty impressive and it's something i think we'll remember for a while when, it, when you talk about the the, the reason for the turnaround uh do you say was obviously the team was energized with the return of, of, of Jake at Newcomb, but at the same time, you know, you guys made the right moves bringing in the right players with Thomas Aboka and Lucas Romeo. Is it a combination of both, uh, of both um, the trades and also the, the Newcomb return that really uh, turned the ship? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both for sure. I think you would have seen some improvements in the second half had the team saved the course. But as, as Louis Robitaille said, the best trade Sylvain Couturier made was the return of, of Jacob Newcomb. So you look at that, obviously, Spook is a game changer in the back end. Romeo is a big goal scoring threat and under the radar addition as well as Charles Antoine Lavallee. So uh, bringing in all those guys and basically four trade deadline acquisitions, if you're going to count Newcomb, all made uh, big, significant impacts. I think, as I said, I think the team had a slight improvement. I mean, part of that was. If we're being fair, the team probably started below where it wanted to be. So I think the improvement came in bringing up the team to where they thought it would be at the beginning of the season. And then the acquisitions and the chemistry coming in and settling in kind of brought them up to that next level and allowed the run of the third round, which, of course, everybody enjoyed very much. Um, this is a yes or no question. Is Jacob Malata coming back? <laughs> yes, actually, okay, that was one of the weirdest that, that things we've ever seen at the uh, town hall. But yeah, that's cer certainly goaltending and a twenty-year-old are the main discussions that are going on at Cape Breton right now, for sure. I, I I don't know. I mean, we just had three sweeps in finals in CHL history, first time that had to be the first time a player leaves in the middle of a playoff run uh, to go to the U18s. But um, looking at your defense core, I mean, you guys have a decision to make uh, in whether it's Thomas Saboka coming back as a 20 in a Euro or Braden Schmidt coming back as just a 20. Um, is there a sense they could keep one or keep both and maybe try and, you know, move one at the draft or move one at Christmas or what's the sense in, in kind of on the back end there? Cause they were both pretty big, uh, pretty big names for you guys. For sure, they both were, and one thing that's worth noting there is that Sylvain Couture has been open about the possibility of bringing Thomas Sabuka back. It seems like that's something they want to do, which, and this is not a disrespect to him, that's not always something you see with 20-year-old imports, yeah. but of course he may have some pro options. I think if you were to break down the roster, the club has been pretty vocal about the fact that they think all seven 19-year-olds from this year's team can play in the league, and I'd be inclined to agree with that. You look up front where you've got Hood and you've got then on the back end, of course, you've got Schmidt and Sabulka, and then Ruccia. To me, those are kind of the big five. And I think Antoine Bois and Charles Antoine Lavallee are probably going to be automatically victims of the numbers game here. But they, to me, have certainly stated their case that they could play in the league. And I hope, I think they all deserve to, and I think they all will. Uh, of course, uh, Sabulka, the 
options there is a little bit different where you might have that window open in, in Czechia. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of discussion. And I don't know how much of that's going to get cleared up at the draft. I was talking about that town hall. One of the better questions I thought that was asked, somebody asked about the possibility of starting with four 20 year olds. And Sylvan said the team was, was open to that idea. And then of course, if Ruchi is one of your 20 year olds, we're getting into a situation where you could have three goaltenders and whatnot. So there's gonna be a lot of interesting roster discussions with this team and they might not be over after the draft. Perhaps so we'll have even more questions than answers, but it's going to be a fun summer in Cape Breton, I think. Yeah, and Adam said, you know, it's not often you see three sweeps in the in the league championship finals. It's not often you see a, a goalie leave uh, during the middle of a playoff run for the U18s, and you don't often see a team get the first overall pick <laughs> when they're playing in the third round of the playoffs, uh, which of course was awarded to uh, to yourself, Pat. Not not you yourself, but your your congrats, your, Pat. Your oh, thanks, your thanks, employment. Um, I guess just your overall thoughts on on having the first overall pick and uh, do you see it being used do you see it being traded uh, where do you, where do you see this uh this pick going well i won't be surprised at all if a team trades it i think there's obviously been a lot of talk they're going to do what's best for the organization which of course is one of those things that's both true and cliche at the same time i obviously still think is not someone who's been shy about making trades although we've kind of seen that settle down now that he's really been able to implement his vision you know, you're looking at a team that, you know, is in pretty good position to take a run at things. Although, as I'm sure you guys talked about elsewhere on the episode, this is shaping up to be a murderer's row of a conference. We're going to all yeah. be begging the QMJHL to uh, go back to one versus 16 playoff <laughs> seating by the time we yep. get to round two, I think, when we've got two of Shakutami, Moncton, Ramuski, and Cape Breton on the sidelines, heading into round three. But that's uh, that's getting ahead of ourselves here. In terms of what might happen, I think there's certainly a high probability in terms of the pick. Katuri at the town hall was very vocal about the fact he thought there was a clear top two in the draft. And of course it might come down to how many games or how open these guys are about coming to the queue, because that's always uh, something that's on the tables, whether or not guys are going to go NCAA or whatnot. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think if I had to predict, I'll predict it gets traded, but I won't be surprised either way. I think it's, uh, you know, certainly, certainly something that could, could swing either way. So it's uh, obviously a good asset to have. And it was really unique, actually, you're kind of walking around the arena in Bay Camo. You're, you're walking around for me personally, getting to call a third round playoff game for the first time ever. And, you know, everybody, all the Eagles fans, the, the parents and fans that you're running into are talking about the draft lottery. Cause I, <laughs> I think it ended up happening about 20 minutes before the puck dropped. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's yeah. not really something the league would ever try to factor into their scheduling because you know, usually those teams are long since gone but certainly a night that we'll remember for a long time for sure uh just to finish it up here uh, you know i've asked kind of everyone through the division uh, obviously you guys had quite the success to end the year um so you had the first overall pick you went to the third round i, I guess just the fan appetite coming into the draft coming into the season uh, are a lot of fans wanting to maybe push this ahead of year and kind of go all in or they realize it's a murderer's row in the Eastern Conference. Let's just be competitive, get to where we got to in the third round with our experience, and then move in next year um, when there's not as many teams in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, it's interesting. I think if you look at the team, the team – it certainly could be good the next few years, probably stronger next year, but the competition probably wouldn't be as strong the year after for the reasons that we just talked about, yeah. you know, depending on the level of fanship you have, you have a lot of people who are sort of lapses that are kind of getting into it. So they getting back into it. So they might not uh, really have taken a look at the competition. And there's also sort of a high when you're in the playoffs. Oh, this team's great. Look at all these guys. We're coming back. But a lot of people maybe not have, not have the chance to sit back and look and say, Oh, okay, this is what we're up against next year. So I think right now people are just kind of taking in the moments. Certainly there's people who, you know, got on the, the bandwagon, so to speak, late in the season in the playoffs. Say, yeah, I got my season tickets. So that's exciting <laughs> to see. Certainly yeah. more people in the building. But generally, I think there's just a lot of goodwill, which is both off ice and on ice too. Uh, you know, the team was entertaining to watch. They were obviously successful. The organization has done a lot of good things in terms of marketing. We talked about the social media, but Joey had done a really good job as a GM and business ops. And also should give credit to the off ice version of Louis Robitaille because we talk about his coaching, which is obviously good, but he's also been one of the guys who's been responsible for the social media approach and getting the guys out there. So he deserves, deserves credit for that as well. So I think right now it's more of a goodwill and just the kind of the novelty of having an exciting competitive team again that uh, perhaps people aren't too much looking at the particulars. One thing that is worth noting that kind of more ties directly into your question is Sylvan had said at the town hall he didn't want to go make sure that he got, he didn't want to gut the team because I think he was probably making reference to what happened in Bathurst in 2018 where they had the Memorial Cup. 
And he didn't say it explicitly, but if you look at what happened after the T10 didn't really get a big bump attendance wise from that because it, you know, there was a bit of a glow, but then the team, you know, obviously goes into a heavy rebuilding. So I think he wants to avoid that. And it could be challenging to make a true, true push next year with the prices going up in the Memorial cup and having those strong teams in the Eastern conference. Now that's not me quoting Sylvain Couturier. That's me kind of reading into what he said, that it might provide some challenges for the Eagles, uh, you know, trying to mount a true, true all in run next year. But I'll say this, I'd be shocked if the team didn't at least try to improve next season, even if they don't go all in. So it might be rather than an all in approach, push some of your chips in both years and see what happens. So again, uh, more questions than answers. And for, now people are just kind of enjoying the ride perfect well uh this has been fantastic from one podcast host to another podcast yes. host you had us on this the the radio last year so now we are ready to make our eagles nest debut when you're ready to make <laughs> that happen and who knows maybe if we get a playoff series we'll have dueling podcasts and we'll uh we'll jump on yours and you jump on ours and we'll We'll have a rivalry on the podcast uh, network. But again, man, it was kind of fun to watch it. I mean, it's a rivalry, but it was good to see the fans of Cape Breton be rewarded for some tough lean years. And, um, you know, we just didn't want you to win the championship. But, hey, we had fun <laughs> watching your fans. And honestly, I, I was one of the big proponents of what you guys were doing on the social media. And I think you guys drove a lot of uh, a lot of fans to to the rink based on showing just what social media can do. So uh, congratulations on all that things. And obviously the social media, the gear and, and the new podcast. Well, appreciate that. And you never know, maybe we will uh, see some crossover next year. And I think if these two teams play, it will be a very long playoff series and it could potentially be very deep in the playoffs, but look forward to that. It's always more fun when your closest geographical teams are your rivals on the ice. And I think we're, we're looking forward to that this season. Absolutely. Well, Pat, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for the draft and uh, you have a good couple of weeks before everything wraps back up. All right. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Thanks, Pat. What an episode. That's yeah. what the offseason does, just interview after interview after interview. But, uh, you know, going around the division, I mean, all three teams that we talked about there are going to push the Wildcats yep. um, in terms of what this season could look like. I mean, Halifax and St. John are battling for 5-6 spot in the division. Uh, potentially with these three, with us, us four teams, right? Yeah, I guess it depends on what Halifax uh, hangs on to uh, yeah. until, you know, until Christmas. You know, they, they're they probably more suited better to win some games in the first half and, and kind of create that separation. Yeah. But um, whatever happens, happens. It's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's going to be some obvious, uh, I think the division looks pretty predictable. Uh, the conference looks pretty predictable uh but uh you know we've we actually have i guess an x factor now for yeah. the first time in a very very long time and uh so that could be uh could be a very huge a uh, huge advantage for the wildcats uh, next season for sure so i mean obviously i said we'd get to our reaction a little bit but i mean we've kind of talked about it over and over and over again but just your your reaction to what this season could be like with with gardner because i mean if well, Tozer said sixty-four and zero, um, yeah. but uh, that's obviously not taking into consideration, you know, the sixteen wins in the playoffs that you need to, uh, yeah. and then the five, yeah, the true. five wins of the, the five, five wins of the five, Memorial yeah, Cup that you need to, yeah. right? So you I mean you got it sixty-four and uh, sixty-four and sixteen? That's eighty mm-hmm. and eighty-five. So eighty-five Jesus. and zero. That's not bad. Um, a hell of a run well obviously not going to happen but no uh no i i in all honesty you know there's been some coaches in moncton that have come along that have done a tremendous job and uh, i saw something today that you know not only is is garner mcdougall maybe the best coach in u sports and now in the chl he could very well be the best coach in if you include NCAA as well. Yeah, you know, it, there's there's somebody saying that on Twitter. I don't want to take it that far, but I mean, we have an opportunity here to to do something special with with uh, with the McDougals, and um, you know, they're they're very well connected, right? So they're uh, the question I asked Taylor about you know surprises on the roster very well could happen. Yeah, you know? and, and it's you know, I and we asked. Kevin Barrett, and you'll hear that interview. You'll see that interview on our YouTube here in the next, or you would have seen it, I guess, um, before this episode dropped. But 
I just is it sustainable and what is it going to look like mm -hmm. with three and four and back to back nights in the middle of you know Wildcat fans have been scorned past two years in January with the doldrums of mid season and I don't think we're going to get into that but I just it'll be interesting to see what the stamp of this team is and you know we've had the Wildcat way for the six years that I've been here and what they're looking for and, and they've had some success through it but this is a completely different a completely different dynamic this is a to quote them hashtag new era like this is this is going to be exciting to see what this the stamp that they put on this team is and I, I don't know how much turnover there's going to be but I think if you look at the roster there's a few players that I don't know if they need to be worried what is going to happen or if they're going to be moved, but I think you got to be on, on your heels. And, um, you know, you asked Kevin in our interview, Gardner's in shape. What yep. does this team look like in shape? Because yep. they, their shifts were 45 seconds, get off 45 mm -hmm. seconds, get off mm -hmm. and be aggressive on the four check. And, you know, I said many times to people asking who the coach was going to be, I don't care the name. The name's awesome, <laughs> but I just want to win. I just want to yeah. see a team that's competing every night, whether we're going, you know, 50 and 16 or 16 and 50. I want to see a team 14 and 50. I want to see a team compete. And I think that's what we're going to see night in and night out. Mm -hmm. Right. So no, it's, you're right. There's you're bang on. It's, uh, you know, with that one game, we went to go see at the J Louis Vac, uh, you know, UNB against UDM. The first thing we saw was structure. Yeah. We saw the yeah. structure. Uh, we saw the, the, the four check, you know, we saw the, the, the D zone coverage. We saw, you know the the jumping into the rush at the right time. We saw the, you know, not um, you know knowing not when to pinch and, and this and that. So this is uh, we know what we're getting as a as a coach here, and uh, it, it, I think we're, we're we might be in for a special year. And I think from the press conference, you saw the coaches that were there. You saw Heptich, you mm -hmm. saw Tessier, you saw Samuel. Uh, it just. It leads me to believe he's surrounding himself with some names that have been here, know the app, like know the game mm -hmm. in the CHL. And, you know, we had the number one power play last year, but they couldn't score when they needed to. Yep. So, you know, I think that'll be something that needs to be, you know, Taylor, if you're listening, tell coach the power play when it needs to score needs to be the, the momentum killer. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an exciting time. And if you're the ticket team, might want to get on those 25, uh, 24, 25 season renewals. I, I don't know. Just send that out now. Don't wait. Brand new coach draft. Maybe don't wait till the middle of August to start your ticket uh, stuff. Like that should be out right now, right now. Um, it's yeah. It should have been out the day after the announcement happened. Like yeah. you need to see this. You need to build on this. I've had people say like the building's going to be rocking. Like it's going to be mm -hmm. exciting. Everyone's pumped for this capitalize on it it's time um but yeah it's 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 going to be a very different draft it's going to be a very different training camp than we've been used to and I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the training camp can hold yeah me too uh i, I like what the sea dogs do after the draft they actually have a development camp yeah uh, i'm not sure if that's something the wildcats would uh would do but it'd be nice if you know we could get some prospects uh you know into town yeah in you know early July uh, just to get to know each other uh, familiar, you know, get familiar with the facilities and stuff like that. But I know the sea dogs do it um, yeah. and they get all their prospects in together and they're in, I know it's a big thing in for, OHL too. Yeah. A lot of development camps and this yeah. and that. So it's, it'd be interesting if, um, you know, maybe that's a direction that, uh, that they take this year. Absolutely. Let's, uh, mm. let's just get some hockey, but uh, it's been a week. It has been a week in, in the hub city and, uh, I'm off to Ontario, yep. and by the time you hear this, I'm in Ontario, um, enjoying what's hopefully a Blue Jays win finally. Um, but I don't get your hopes up. Yeah, I know. I just want to see Romano's entrance. That's all mm. I care about. Um, but yeah, we're back in uh, we're back in two weeks, and when we're back in two weeks, it's draft week, just like that, sir. Holy crap! Just like that. Um, what? Yeah, pretty much. I think. Because the episode will come on the 22nd. We're not on the 29th. And oh, yeah, then we right record right. on March 3rd or June 3rd, Jeez. June 5th. And what does that mean? That means you got to get your mock draft ready. That's big right. Guy. I've already got it done. Nice. You are going to be on the board with uh, Austin Robson from Puck Preps as you guys are going to do a mock draft show. And, uh, well, don't give it away. Now he knows what you're picking. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so you guys are going to be doing a mock draft show as we get ready for the draft. Um, and when the draft comes, we are looking to do some live coverage. Mm-hmm. We are looking to keep you updated as much as we can with interviews with players. Again, this is all new for us. We're working with a brand new, uh, brand new hockey ops and, and communications. But uh, so far, Natasha and Lauren and Mallory have been pretty good to us last year and, yes. and into this year. And and obviously, her Taylor enjoy what we do. Um, so hopefully, we we can continue to cover this draft for you. Before the draft, we are going to be on Q103 with Brock Gallant. We're going to be there from 3.30 to 5.20, um, getting you set, getting you ready um, with him for the draft. Uh, so we're going to be all over this thing. It's in our backyard, and we're going to do the best we can to get you going. And then after that, uh, season finale, recapping the draft, and uh, a long-awaited off-season of mm. rest because it uh, shapes up as it could be a very long season. You're right. <laughs> I, that is the hope. Yeah. That, that is, every year. That is the hope. Yeah. And hopefully this is this yeah. is the year. Hopefully this is the year. Again, thanks to everyone in the Maritimes Division Media: uh, Johnny Rocket of Bathurst, Taylor Stewart of the Islanders, Pat McNeil of the Eagles, Colin Landry of the Mooseheads, and of course Jamie Tozer of Station Nation and St. John. And of course, thanks very much to our new general manager Taylor McDougal for joining us on the episode. Um, that's it for the next two weeks for Jeremy. I'm Adam. See you in two weeks. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wildcast podcast. Follow us on social media at Moncton Wildcast.